Forwards, we have Sydney Lokale from Kariobangi Sharks, Pitson Mutamba for Sofa Paka, Alan Wanga for Kakamega Homeboys, and David Juma who plays for Tasca. That is uh, the 25 man provisional squad that uh, has been named to do duty for the Harambe Stars in AFCON and uh, Chan 2020 qualifiers that will be coming up. Uh, later on. Now let's move on from uh, football. Let's get to some golf action. Now Italian professional that is Lorenzo Gagli won the 2018 edition of the Barclays Kenya Open Golf title in a dramatic finish at the Par 71 Mudaiga Golf Club, uh, club course that was last year. The Italian beat Swedes uh, Jens Fabring in the third hole of a sudden death playoff to clinch the top prize of 10 million Kenya shillings. May I ask that to move away from the table? Hey, 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 hey. Wait, wait, up, up. Oh, that's a good idea. I am not a gate crusher. <laughs> I came here at the invitation of the official guests, the President Uhuru Kenyatta, my brother. <laughs> invited me to come and join him. There are three types of sports. Soccer, rugby, and golf. And I compared the funds and I said that soccer is played by gentlemen, the majority of the, the funds are rowdy. <laughs> golf is played by, by thugs, <laughs> but the majority of funds are gentle. <laughs> sorry, sorry, rugby. <laughs> I meant Rugby. And then I said, golf is played by gentlemen and also watched by gentlemen. Well, of course, the highlights are from last year's edition of the Kenya Open Championship that took place at the Pass 71 Mudaiga Golf Club here in Nairobi with Lorenzo Gagli emerging as the winner of the 50th edition of the Kenya Open. Of course, uh, that is what we will be talking about today. Our focus is on the 2019 edition of the Kenya Open. In studio, we have the Kenya Open Tournament Director, Patrick Obath. Of course, uh, uh, we want to, to get into the conversation about what to expect in 2019. And first things first, where are we on the preparation so far? Um, the event this year is going to be a lot bigger than it was last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are very well advanced with our preparations, mm -hmm. which in fact started in, uh, in September last year. Mm -hmm. And we've covered a lot of ground, especially with the new areas that we're going to have mm -hmm. um, within the event, mm -hmm. which we did not have in the previous uh, event, which was the Challenge Tour, mm -hmm. um, where the prize money was only about half a million dollars. Uh -huh. uh, and now the prize money is 1.1 million euros. Mm -hmm. So it's m o more than double in terms of the pot of, of, of prize money. Mm -hmm. Well, there were changes, or rather there are changes that have been made to this year's edition. If you can explain what these changes are and how they affect this year's edition. Um, I think the, there are several changes that have happened. Uh -huh. One is the event moving from the Challenge Tour mm -hmm. to the European Tour. Uh -huh. It's going to attract a completely different set of people. Uh -huh. So um, even as we talk now, the entries are beginning to, we are beginning to understand what the entries look like. Mm -hmm. And some of those names are quite, actually quite big names within golf. Uh -huh. So that's the first thing that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is that um, the kind of... Um, facilities we are putting up are going to be different. Uh -huh. The look and feel of the course is going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, before we had very few grandstands. Mm -hmm. This time we are going to have a lot of grandstands on the course where people can sit and watch the golf. Mm -hmm. um, there will also be a lot of uh, pavilions where people can go and have drinks and somewhere to eat and drink. Mm -hmm. But also I think the major thing that is going to change yes. is that the event is going to be broadcast live over four days uh -huh. across the whole world. Mm -hmm which never happened before. Mm -hmm. 
mm. and that I think is a quantum leap that we've had yes. as a result of increasing the prize money from um, 500,000 euros mm -hmm. to 1.1 mm -hmm. million euros. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, also I, I saw earlier on in the year you said that uh, on the course the holes from where you tee off have changed. If you can expound on that. Yeah. What, what, what happened when we had a look at the course, and it's going to be held in current country yes. club this year. Mm -hmm. When we had a look at the course, we were looking as to how can we get spectators to be present at the start mm -hmm. and at the finish of the game. Mm -hmm. And the holes that traditionally you start and finish in current did not have sufficient space around them. Mm -hmm. So we had to look for the holes that give us the space. So instead of teeing off in the first hole as is normally played at current, yes. they're going to tee off instead of hole number one, they're going to tee off on hole number 13 mm -hmm. as hole number one. So they're going to play 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 mm -hmm. first, and then 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. And so that means that the back nine, what is normally called the back nine in current, is going to become the, the front nine. Uh -huh. And then they play the front nine as the back nine. Back nine. Yeah. Yes. Uh, last year, we had the 50th uh, anniversary of the Kenya Open. This year will be 51 years of the tournament. You know, what can you say of, about the growth of uh, this prestigious tournament? Like if you look at the start of the Kenya Open, it was part of what used to be called the safari swing. Uh -huh. And it's really significant of that word safari. Safari swing. And that used to bring uh, um, players who wanted to sort of play in Africa. Mm -hmm. They would play in Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Kenya. Mm -hmm. So they would come early in the, in the season when there used to be no events in Europe because of winter. They'd come and play in, the, in, in Africa to basically try and get some pre-season practice. Uh -huh. That is how the Kenya Open started off. And so we used to have just a few international players coming. Uh, plus, and so the event was quite small. Mm -hmm. Over the years, it grew, and we got a lot more international players coming to play. And then, uh, about 18 years ago, we were admitted to what is called the Challenge Tour, uh -huh. which is one level below the European Tour where, we are, now, where mm -hmm. we are now. So the Challenge Tour meant we had to then operate under certain rules. 156 entries, and then only uh, about 50 um, other players could be invited by the promoter which is us uh -huh. so that has been for the last 17 years or so of the event mm -hmm. it's been playing at the challenge, challenge tour level tour. and it started as a junior challenge tour event until last year with the assistance of barclays who was then our our, our title sponsor mm -hmm. 